welcome you guys to my new lecture about equations and actually this is the last installment in the series about equations and we will talk about the Newton method. The Newton method is a way to numerically find the zeros of a function. Until now I only showed you analytical ways to, sh uh, to solve for the zeros of a function and now you will learn how to do it numerically when there is no way to actually analytically find the solutions. Just um, let's just have a look at what we are talking about. The Newton method is, method is a very simple method. I just uh, plotted here a graph. Here you have the x axis, here y values. Actually, we know that the zero shall be somewhere here. This is some arbitrary function, so there are no special abilities of this function that I'm talking or that I'm relating to. Now what I'm doing is I just write down how to differentiate a function. Not actually to differentiate, but to find a slope. If we would have two points, so I will draw them in. Okay, okay let's do this. Okay, if you have one point x0, okay, and you would calculate the slope of this, uh, of the function in this point here, actually, then you would have a triangle, and the triangle would lead you here, and you would get another x value, x1, okay, and that, so they are always incrementing, they are increasing by 1, so we would have x1, okay, this would give us the the triangle here, but actually, if you look at the the f value, so the the function value of the new value that you would get get here on the x-axis, it would have uh, the the function value of zero. Okay, so if we take this as given, then we can write down this f prime x0 equals fx0 minus fx1 this will actually become 0 because we chose it so that it becomes 0 and x0 minus 1 okay now then you will get a slope here I, I've tried to draw the slope in this is the point where we intersect and actually this value of x1 is equal to 0 Okay, and this is the fx value, but the x value, some specific value. Okay, we I just multiplied out the equation with x uh, zero minus x one. I got this equation. This is just the denominator times this is the right hand side. Then I assume that this will be zero because we have a line, and you can find its inter uh, intersection with the x axis. This will be zero, and then you have the simplified form: x f f f of x zero equals f prime of x zero, and this multiplied with x zero minus x one. Now, <clears throat> I divide with f prime x zero. Then I have written this: f of x zero over f prime x zero equals f zero minus f one. Then what I have to do is just I put this to the right hand side. Uh, to the left hand side, sorry, and this to the right hand side. So this will turn its sign to a plus, and this will turn its sign to a minus. And this is actually the step that we are repeating all the all the time and all the time. You just start off with an x zero, plug it in, calculate x one, then you do the same with x one. Here x one and here x one, you will get x two and so forth. So in general, you will end up to have another uh, so to say x value another slope and you see these values are tending to zero sometime in after some time and this is actually a pretty good value difference here and if you do it infinitely often you will actually end up with a zero okay so this is the general formula you, you have x of n minus f of x n over f prime x of n and this will be equal to x of n plus 1 so this is the next value that you, that you get so the steps I repeat them again you just start off with a good guess for your zero it doesn't have to be a very very near point you just can take it mm, this, uh, only the integer for example if you know it's somewhere around 1 and 2 you can start at 1 or 2 it doesn't matter 
and then you calculate the function value, then you calculate the, the or better, you evaluate your function, you evaluate your function in, not your function, but your um, derivative in this point, then you can calculate the next point, x1, you go to x1 and repeat the same stuff with this, then you end up with x2 and repeat this over and over again. Now for the sake of the example, I'm just using a nice function, the cost function. Okay? We know that the cost function has a zero at p half, pi half. This is just uh, a fourth circle. Actually, this is uh, the, uh, the value that it has, pi half. And we want to calculate it's zero. Okay, it's first zero. So I start off with a good guess. I say it's one. You you actually should know how to differentiate functions and the. If you differentiate cos of x, you will end up with minus sine of x. And uh, okay, let's just have a look at this. What happens? Okay, we start off with f of uh, with x equals one. We get a function value of 0.54. We get a mm, we get a slope of minus minus 0 0.841. And the next value that we will calculate with this formula, so one minus this value over this value will give you 1.642. Just plug it here in. Then you get your new function value. It's minus point zero, uh, so minus point zero seven one. Then you get your slope. It's minus point um, nine nine uh, minus point nine nine seven. You get your next value. And actually, if you compare this to the value that we are looking for, it's really, really close. It's 1.571. Then you plug it in here as an x value. Now you get the function value, and you see here it's very, very good. It's you know, 0.00012. It's actually very, very close to the actual value. The slope is not actually equal to 1. It's just the precision that I needed here. I just took here. Only three. Here I uh, appended uh, some um, some precision precision so that you can see it's actually not zero. And here we have this value. It's one point five seven zero eight zero eight. Okay. So actually pretty close. I actually uh, think that it went further here. So we only did this three steps, and we actually got it with one value that is pretty pretty good and pretty pretty close to our actual solution. And you would just repeat this stuff. So then you would take this here, plug this in, go further, and you just repeat it uh, so long until you get to the precision that you need. For example, five uh, commas or what's interesting to you. Okay. Now just have a look at the next example. So I uh, chose uh, the solutions here are very um, hard numbers. It was first pi half, and here it will be actually the Euler number, Euler's number. And the function that we are looking for is x multiplied with log of x, which is the logarithm of x to the basis of e minus x. Okay. Actually, if you plug in e, you will see e times log of e to the base of e. This will be one minus e. So you have e minus e which is just zero. Okay, now we have uh, the, the derivative of this function. Actually, if you do this, you need to remember how to differentiate differences. It's easy, just differentiate first this stuff, then subtract this stuff. And then you should also know how to, sub, uh, to differentiate products. Uh, this is actually also very easy. You differentiate first x, leave this as it is, so it's 1 times log of x minus log of, uh, x times the differentiation of that. It's 1 over x. So we have x multiplied with 1 over x will just give you 1. And differentiate this will give you minus 1. So we actually end up having log of x. Okay. Now we start off with a value, a guess. I could start with 2 or 3. I just start with 2 because I just did it. <laughs> okay. The function value that you will get is minus 0.613. Uh, the slope you will get is 0.693. The function value that you now got is 
2.885. Okay, it's it's pretty close actually for our first guess. Now we use this value from here, and we see that this will give us a function value of point mm, one seven two. This will give you a slope of one point uh, zero six uh, zero. This will give you a function value, uh, not a function value, but an x value of 2.723. We use this 2.723. Calculate the function value. Just plug this into that here. I did it in Excel because Excel is just faster and uh, you can use some al algorithms like this and just plug them in. If you, if you guys like, I can do a video on that. Uh, just just uh, write comments or uh, write me a message. I will try to to look if I can make a video to that. Okay, then we have this here, which is just the slope in this value. Okay, this is 1.002, and the function value is 2.718. If I had a desired precision of uh, three post comma digits I would be done okay three digits after the comma and I would be very good here off I would stop here and say okay the solution is uh, approximately equal to that value yeah, yeah sorry actually to this value so. now that's it actually and uh, now maybe someone of you might think wow Newton methods is so good why use it uh, any analytical methods or uh, are there any other methods to solve polynomial, uh, not polynomials in the general, but find the zeros of any function that you have? And actually, there are many methods. Um, this is the just the simplest method I just presented it here. And what is another advantage? Not an advantage, but it's it's pretty easy. You only have to calculate the first derivative and the function value next. Okay, it was easy. But it also has problems. Actually, if you look at this ratio here, we have f of x i over f of prime x i. You know, actually, if you remember that uh, fractions always have to have a non-negative, uh, non-zero here, then you see the problem. If this will tend to zero if your function is getting flatter and flatter, uh, or the slope is getting uh, tending to zero near your point you you won't never have a convergence okay the point will not, not converge so the Newton method can fail actually f of x should be defined f of prime of x sorry uh, the same is for f of x and an easy example would just use the example from above and try to solve it and you will see what happens because if you do this you will end up, uh, so for example, I, I tried with point uh, 1, it tend to infinity, so just forget this. But um, how to check this is pretty simple. Look at this column, and you see if this is not tending to zero, you're doing crap, actually, okay? This is the point to, to look at. If your algorithm doesn't converge, this will never become zero, okay? It will just uh, fluctuate or it will go to infinity. Just look at this when you are calculating, is this true or not, okay? Is the function value actually tending to zero, okay? So I thank you guys. I wish you um, only the best for the future. I hope you guys enjoyed my video lectures about equations, how to solve them. Uh, and if you still have some questions, just feel free to comment, ask your questions, and maybe if someone has some topic that he's interested in and he wants some videos on that, just post that here and I will give you some, some lectures maybe on that. And if you are just interested in that, write me a message or just command, okay? So guys, have a nice day and uh, we'll see you next.